Hey, you're watching Rapid MMA. I'm Tyler, and this is the breakdown for UFC 201 Ian McCall versus Justin Scoggins. Personally, I'm most looking forward to this fight. I know this card doesn't have a lot of hype behind it, but McCall vs. Scoggins, Rose Nami Yunus in the main event. I'm also interested in Ross Pearson fighting. Uh, let's get started with this breakdown. We haven't seen number 5 rank Ian McCall fight since UFC 183 over a year and a half ago. He squared off against John Lineker and despite having a semi-successful first round, he ended up losing the next two pretty handily, unable to secure his takedowns or avoid counter strikes in the pocket. He lost that fight via decision. Prior to the Lineker fight, Ian defeated Brad Pickett and Iliard Santos by decision. Before those fights, he went to a draw with Demetrius Johnson, ended up losing a decision in a rematch, and his next fight was against Joseph Benavides, also was a decision loss. Now despite Ian McCall unable to pick off the number one guy or champion in the flyweight division, it's important to understand that John Lineker, DJ, Joseph Benavides are all at the top of the list and Ian has really only been competing with the best, kind of in that Uriah Faber position. He even competed against Dominic Cruz at one point and he lost that fight. Other than that, Ian has been able to hold his own as a top contender. What's interesting about Ian's time off is his flirting with the idea of retirement. He's gone through a series of surgeries on his hands and dealing with injuries. He's kept himself occupied though with being a guest on podcasts until starting his own. I believe it's called Storytime with Uncle Creepy. That's something to keep in mind when picking this fight. We're not sure if he's really that healthy. He might just need to pick up a paycheck against Goggins and see how his body feels. Regardless, I think this is a tough matchup for McCall. It's a winnable one, but Without being active, it could be difficult to adjust. If he does lose this one, I hope the UFC keeps him on the roster. Ian McCall isn't consistent with wins, but he hasn't really had an easy fight. Plus, McCall is a great personality, he's an exciting fighter, and has always been one of my personal favorite fighters. Justin Scoggins is a fighter I've had my eye on for a little while now. He's 4-2 in his UFC career at this point. With the current title shot in Steven Wonderboy Thompson's sight, Another South Carolina native with a Kenpo Karate background is looking to make a big statement against Ian McCall. The thing about Scoggins compared to Wonderboy is that he also has a background in wrestling which is very important for someone who is primarily a karate stylist. When Scoggins faced off against Ray Borg, there was a lot of buzz around Borg, not as much for Scoggins with Borg closing as a 240 favorite. In that fight we saw a new kind of refresh and refine Justin Scoggins displaying speed, dynamic striking, and excellent wrestling. He showed that in the past, but he was in prime condition in the Borg fight. There are certainly aspects of Ian McCall's game that Scoggins needs to be aware of. I would describe Ian as sort of a boxer slash wrestler, sometimes a bit of a brawler. In his early career, he was mostly focused on getting the takedown and working from there. Over the years, he's still pretty much the same fighter, but his striking has certainly progressed. He works well in the pocket with decent footwork on the outside. He's an orthodox fighter but does play with southpaw every so often. He usually looks to catch kicks and look for counters off of it whether it's with strikes or takedowns. This will be something Scoggins has to watch out for. Ian does a decent job blending his takedowns with his striking, probably what he does best. He's good with top control, especially from the back. We all know the highlight of him punching Demetrius Johnson from back mount. I also think Ian McCall is one of the faster fighters in the division. He has good hand speed, he's light on his feet, and does well in scrambles. Ian will be giving up a height and reach advantage, a small one but it's still worth noting. He's older than Scoggins at 32 but he hasn't been finished in the UFC, he's gotten a decision every time. Outside the UFC he's been submitted a couple times but never knocked out or TKO'd. Without the injuries one could argue that he'd likely be in his prime at this age but we'll see with this fight, it all depends on this return. Overall, Ian has decent striking defense at 67%. He does absorb a few significant strikes, but at the risk of landing at the same rate. From what I've seen, it's either being kicked from the outside or he'll get countered in the pocket while throwing combinations. His takedown defense sits at 80%, which I believe will be put to the test against someone like Scoggins. Generally, Ian is the one to initiate takedowns with his accuracy sitting at 30%, but that's because he'll average maybe 7 or 8 takedowns a fight. He's always mixing it up and changing levels, so I wouldn't look at 30% as a bad number but rather as him being proactive at pressing the action. A few last things about Ian McCall is that he has a notable win over Juicier Formiga outside the UFC and out of his 13 wins in his career, 4 of them are by KO and 3 are by submission. Although Scoggins stance and style resembles that of a karate fighter with a lot of the front leg side kicks, spinning kicks and forward punch blitzes, 
Scoggins also has a very wrestling oriented style too. Much like McCall, Scoggins will mix in a takedown off forward pressure, either off his own combination or his opponent's forward pressure. Against Ray Borg, Scoggins showed a really nice long jab that helped him keep distance and also set up punches and kicks. It was a really good addition to his already dynamic style as a karate fighter, adding in those boxing basics. What Scoggins will need to be aware of in this fight is watching out for the guillotine when going in for a takedown. McCall will absolutely look for that opportunity, since we've seen Scoggins get caught in that position time and time again. John Moraga was able to study that about Scoggins and actually get him in that submission in the second round of their fight. You'll also need to watch out for forward combinations and pressure of McCall. Scoggins is usually decent with footwork, but I've noticed sometimes he'll get clipped with a few shots when the opponent is aggressively moving forward, cutting off the cage and leaving Scoggins little space. You'll also need to be aware in the scrambles. Ian McCall will undoubtedly look to take this fight to the ground and keep top position. Scoggins does very well off his back, but if he rolls out, he needs to make sure that McCall doesn't take that back position. Scoggins is a tough guy to take down, but who knows what the dynamic will be on the feet. Both guys are good at timing takedowns. Lastly, flyweights are very quick and able to close distance. Steven Thompson can use his kicks to create distance and keep that space, but for a flyweight fighter, it's a little different. Although kicks definitely still help create space, the tempo in which that space is closed is much faster. A lot of movement and angles are going to help Scoggins here. Don't let McCall cage cut. Justin Scoggins will have a southpaw advantage in this fight. I definitely think he'll have success with the open stance against McCall. I'll explain a little further in detail later. As mentioned before, Scoggins does well blending his grappling and striking together and is always looking to pull it to the ground, and that's displayed by the 4.47 takedowns landed in a 15 minute span. He has decent top control once he's in that position too. His takedown defense is also high like McCall's at 81% with the 65% takedown accuracy which is very good. A lot of this probably stems from his fight with Dustin Ortiz and Ray Borg. Lastly, Justin has 11 wins, 6 by knockout, 1 by submission, and the rest by decision. I think if Ian McCall wins this fight, it's not too dissimilar to how Dustin Ortiz fought Scoggins. Pressure, pressure, pressure. You cannot give Scoggins space to move. You also need to be aware that this is a southpaw fighter, and those kicks are going to be coming from all angles. Front leg side kicks and rear leg kicks hook kicks, and kicks off punches just like how Steven Thompson does it. Ian will also want to keep a steady jab, both pawing and stinging. This will help to keep Scoggins backing up, but perhaps even draw him in. Depending on how Ian uses it, it'll help him sneak the right hand in. Leg kicks are also very important against someone like Scoggins because he's a very mobile fighter. A leg kick will stuff the forward momentum and hinder mobility over time, especially when Scoggins has switched to orthodox. Of course, the next most important tactic in this fight is to look for the double leg off the pressure. Scoggins will either look for a takedown or karate blitz when he's pressured, and these are opportune times for uppercuts, flying knees, or takedowns. Scoggins is elusive, so hopefully the time off hasn't hindered McCall's cardio, because he should fully expect this to go three rounds. I think if Ian McCall wins, it'll probably be by decision, perhaps even a submission. In my opinion, Justin Scoggins shouldn't brawl with Ian McCall. Sometimes fighters will get into those exchanges in the pocket, and that's not Justin's strength. Rushing the karate blitzes will result in McCall ducking low and winging the right hand, which is exactly what happened with Steven Thompson fighting Jake Allenberger. Scoggins has a good chin, but it's not a hit he'll want to take. Those little mistakes can change the entire dynamic of a fight. Also, if it's not the winging right hand, anticipate the takedown. Scoggins can't allow McCall to corner him. A way to counter this is also establishing a good jab, which is exactly what Scoggins did against Ray Borg. Scoggins didn't want to be pressured like he was against Dustin Ortiz, so he stayed light on his feet with good in and out movement, using long, stinging jabs that connect and follow up with the straight left down the pipe. That's what will be available in the Southpaw vs Orthodox matchup. This will create space and in turn open up the lethal arsenal of kicks that Scoggins has. When Ian gets frustrated, and plunges forward to close distance, take McCall down. If I were Scoggins, I wouldn't spend too much time in the clinch space if the takedown fails because that's generally where Scoggins will get tagged and where McCall shines. The only exception to that is if Scoggins has McCall press against the cage. Stay out of the pocket. If he does enter it, make it a quick one-two or takedown. Work the open stance kicks and straight left, but most of all, stay mobile. 
I think Scoggins would likely win by decision or perhaps a TKO. Although McCall hasn't been knocked out, we just don't know how he'll look upon return and Justin Scoggins kicks, they can be lethal although we haven't seen them in the UFC to that degree yet. My prediction is Justin Scoggins by KO, TKO stoppage in the first round. I understand Ian McCall hasn't been finished before other than submission, but I do think this is a good matchup for Scoggins. Regardless if it's a finish or not, I still see Scoggins winning. Here are my reasons. Ian McCall's fight with Joseph Benavides was the first tip-off because Benavides is a southpaw that also switches stances, but is also a good wrestler. McCall had troubles closing distance. Benavides was able to throw the left kick from southpaw to land of the body, stuff McCall coming forward with leg kicks, and sometimes go up high with the head kicks. McCall still opted to stay on the outside. Scoggins is lighter on his feet, kicks are much more dynamic, and is much more accurate with the strikes than Benavides. Second, Justin Scoggins' fight against Dustin Ortiz was good insight into how well he does off his back. Although he lost that fight, the first round was filled with excellent scrambles and great back and forth wrestling. Scoggins had a deep arm bar in on Ortiz, but Ortiz didn't tap. Ortiz fought McCall in the past and McCall won, but Ortiz really didn't implement the wrestling heavy game plan like he did against Scoggins. I don't think McCall will be able to outgrapple Scoggins on the ground. I think Scoggins is a bit too crafty, but I do expect it to be competitive there. In my opinion, I'd give the edge to Scoggins in the wrestling department in this fight. Third, Scoggins' fight against Ray Borg basically seals the deal for me. Other than the looming threat of getting his head caught in the guillotine, Scoggins was able to impose his will and completely dominate Borg. He came in looking better than we've ever seen him with a solid jab, great in and out combinations, this frustrated Borg to the point where he was chasing Scoggins, swinging for the fences, trying to pull guard. I can absolutely see this happening against Ian McCall. I think the way Ian McCall fights, staying on the outside and rushing forward to land combinations isn't going to work against Scoggins. I see Scoggins reading him like a book and landing a hook kick or some variation of a head kick. The speed is going to give him big problems, plus Scoggins is very good at mixing in takedowns. Another very minor note. And I'm not making any assumptions, but Ian McCall hasn't fought in this USADA era. There's always the possibility he looks different or performs differently than he used to. Besides that, he still hasn't fought in a while, we don't know how he'll perform, and he's had that flirting with the idea of retirement in the past. My final pick is Justin Scoggins to win via first round knockout or TKO. I simply see him outclassing Ian McCall. I think McCall certainly has a good chance, he's dangerous in the pocket. He's a good wrestler, and he's tough as hell, so I won't be surprised if he doesn't get finished. But Scoggins is on fire lately, and people will start talking about him after this fight. I think Scoggins is very, he matches up well against people like Ian McCall. So thank you for watching Rapid MMA, and please leave your thoughts and your insights down below in the comments. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe to Rapid MMA.